Thank the activity you. of your operator, then it's a field. Yeah. Okay. So a field basically yeah, has additional like multiplication. It's called that fruit. It's because it's all built off like that's it. It's it. It's it. It's um, I have one those are doing both this Friday and the portfolio like is next week. So those are both commutative operations, uh, and it's a group of respective real dead week is okay. So, wait, so, so say that again. What, what do you mean when it a real dead week should have absolutely nothing to do with it? So there's you can find a different operation, operation but like the same set wouldn't be a group with respect to that operation. No, you end up with these professors who so you can start with a group, you define an operation, and then that doesn't work. Hey, we are so far behind. We're going to try to get everything done this week. A, a field is like a super group. I mean, I know. <laughs> so you basically. Yeah, like three weeks so this is just saying that you take like, you know, two things in your field, do something to them, and you get something back in your field. So that's like all that that is. So addition, right, it's an abelian group, so you, it's, right, the you, thing has to be associated since it's a group, and then the abelian means it doesn't matter. Really, yeah, our geology finals. Um, you just call them zero, or like the, the identity element yeah. zero, and then multiplication Did you, uh, is called the, I took it years ago. the identity yeah. element one. But like with multiplication, you just have to take yeah, it zero Robert. because it's not a group if you include that. Yeah, the short this kind of round guy. Because zero times okay, anything just has zero back, back, so like that just yeah. everything. <laughs> um, he puts out, is there any connection to this field? Well, to is the physical you have all the tests, right? Yeah, because it's multiple choice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, just memorize every answer. It it well, works to a point. You know, like so he changed up his testing method and had to there any the direct connection or is it just okay. Okay. Like the tests. Vector fields are fields. Kind of. Oh, it's a good way to my friends. It's it's really just like it depends on what you define here. Every test or every choice. Yeah, because it's it's a hundred questions. Cross would not be. Yeah, no, it's okay, well, uh, no, thank you for continuing investing your time into this uh, course of a certain level of being of Um So, our sufferings come to the end very soon. So, unless uh, there will be big complaints, we will stop seeing each other this week. Well, if someone wants, you can keep, keep meeting, but. Uh, there will be no obligation. So, uh, four meetings total, including today. And uh, most interesting will be Friday with presentations. So, if you have an idea what it will be, just start working on it. And the rest is, so we say, optional or secondary. Uh, I would appreciate if you send the uh, slides on Thursday. Midnight, so that everything will be loaded here and Friday will go smoothly. The room is reserved for an hour longer, so um, it will. I do not believe that we, we will be able to fit into 15 minutes, so it, it, will, it, will go, uh, it will go longer. And I probably will send you a list of who will speak after whom. So if, if there is a like, life and death uh, schedule conflict, we we'll just move. In such a way that those who need to look earlier will be presenting earlier. Last time I will be able to help with the project is Wednesday night. So I will have a lot of wish to help on Thursday, but I will not be in the city. I need to, uh, to be on travel to thesis defense in another state, and I will be driving from 6 a.m then attending and then uh, driving back. So, plan if you need any help, express it before Thursday, although it is one day before presentation, I will be just not, not available physically. <laughs> Many thanks to 92% of the class. Uh, well, by now, probably 96, and I'll check well, maybe it, in, in a minute it will be 100%. So uh, the chapters of your uh, reports are already in processing for booklets, so hopefully you will see them on uh, Friday. If you suddenly realize that you want to change something, do not hesitate, but it is not no required. What you have is already good. But if you are a perfectionist and you come up with a year, um, there could be a last minute change option. 
So Wednesday night lab is for uh, tightening the loose ends towards presentations. If you are not sure about uh, something is incomplete, something can be improved, please come. If you're 100% sure, then just relax and accumulate the energy, uh, strength. And uh, last thing that I fear to forget to mention, uh, please select one of the most representative runs of your code with your parameters and uh, upload to YouTube and send me the link. As, uh, you will need it anyway for your presentations because in the relatively squeezed time it is much easier to show movie rather than explain by words. And uh, I plan to include it into the booklets in the same way as you saw from last year's. Okay, done with projects. Now you can lean back and, and relax. Um, the subject to present <coughs> is important, helpful, critical, but there is so small amount of time that we will not be able to go into anything in depth. So it will be more like a fairy tale to entertain you. So who we are, what are we doing, where we are in the, in the class material. Well, uh, of course, this ambitious plan will, will never come. This will never come. Um, in today's meeting, I will try to squeeze material two weeks. <laughs> and on Wednesday, I will try to squeeze material on, on maybe one week. So today, uh, I'll tell as much as I can about <coughs> spin. And um, on coming Wednesday, I will share some stories that three or four of you would find most near and dear to your heart based on your projects. Uh, some of the projects were dealing with multiple potential energy services and uh, this uh, Marcus theory that was declared in the world but we never were exposed to it. So um, I will do my best effort to deliver as much as possible about transfer Directions between different electronic states, this reorganization of uh, potential energy surfaces. And on Wednesday, I'll try my best to deliver the key feature of molecular spectroscopy. You have known, you, you, you were aware just as a widow persons about the stuff that we didn't cover in the course, but uh, I, I never doubt for even a second that you are aware of the uh, hydrogen atom spectra, which are main feature is that they have very linear shape, that they're in, instead of continuous and distributed spectra, they have very narrow lines. Right? And any atom, if we um, scratch the white stuff from inside of the fluorescent lamp, it will be not fluorescent anymore, it will emit something greenish, purplish, and if one takes a uh, um, spectrum of emission of the mercury into this tube, there will be also few lines. So any atomic spectra are line-wise, and if you were ever exposed to molecular spectroscopy, even if you do not touch uh, solids and non materials, they are of very distributed line width and their shapes are non standard. You cannot describe the spectrum of molecules just as a set of lines that uh, do experience broadening. There are shapes like palm with several sub peaks. And they are offset for absorption and emission from main frequency of electronic transition. So there is a very specific influence of nuclear motion onto spectra of molecules. There is a phenomena of uh, Stokes shift 
and uh, there are shapes of, uh, of molecular spectra. I keep an ambition to cover it on Wednesday. And practically, for those of you who touched this area in part of your projects, this has a little of technical benefits. So if we judge your writings formally without any mercy, then formally a paper, if it has some computation, should explain which equations are solved. We all know. Schrodinger equation. Forget the solution for it. But then you need to formulate the Hamiltonian of your system. And I, at my time, I need a great head throw off feeling when trying to put a Hamiltonian when there is not one potential surface, but two of them. So, um, if you feel comfortable and, or if you, um, without knowing, or if you know how to formulate this Hamiltonian, then you are lucky. But just in, in case, I will keep an ambition to cover this issue on coming Wednesday as well. So, how to formulate a Hamiltonian when we have more than one potential simultaneously. So you already um, practiced quantum dynamics. You got the results. You even wrote a paper on this. But um, how to express a Hamiltonian is would be a nice thing to cover to round up what we do in class. Again, don't concentrate. Don't take notes. Win back. There will be nothing serious. The only important thing is presentation. So what is the connection between ambitious <coughs> plan for Wednesday and today? The electronic transitions, which are key parts for molecular spectroscopy, are described by same mathematical tools, especially if you're looking for for transition between just pair of levels, like occupied and unoccupied molecular orbitals. The algebra of operators, the style how the future is predicted, how the expectation values are evolved in time, are identical to mathematical tools for describing spin, which is internal angular momentum that responds to, to the magnetic field. And I do not care about spin. I do not like spin. But math that we get from looking at a spin is extremely helpful for uh, Stokes shift, Marcus theory, Frank quantum factors, molecular spectroscopy, things that physical chemists must love. And some of you are or will be exposed to nuclear magnetic resonance and then um, voluntarily or involuntarily you will be exposed to the concept of spin and its consequences on uh, properties of material. So in between, this is a recall from uh, last non-project lecture, which was long, long ago. So between these two lines, there is like 10 intense math pages of, of uh, textbook. So I, uh, I kind of goofed up of not, not showing it. Um, hope you're not regretting it. But the consequences of rigorous study of the angular momentum is in two brief statements. Rotations take discrete values of angular momentum. And angular momentum has direction. I didn't surprise anyone. This is kind of trivial. 
and the higher the energy of uh, rotational motion, the longer the vector that represents rotation around this vector. But the length and the direction of this vector is allowed to take only specific values. So if you summarize quantum mechanics of angular momentum in, uh, I would say, kindergarten level, then it was what I tried to say. Length and speed of, length, uh, speed of rotation and direction of rotation take discrete values. Good. The higher the energy, the longer the vector. And in more advanced chapters of quantum theory, one can consider several objects rotating simultaneously and adding together energy of their rotations. And then those vector experience simple rules of vector addition. So you can just take, if there is several things rotating inside, if you don't speak about um, atoms and molecules, the best example of adding angular momentum, which we will not cover here, is um, quadrocopter. So it has several propellers and it um, keeps stabilized because two of them rotate once side to another, therefore it's stable. And when you play with it, if you need to turn around, you uh, not going up or down, but just rotate. You quicken two that rotate clockwise, you slow down another one, and then it starts rotating as a whole. So there is a connection analogy to like atom with several electrons that rotate, or electrons that have internal angular momentum. It's just entertaining picture. I regret that I didn't draw it with demonstration. Otherwise, we, we, we could have fun. So, the simplest rotation along this paradigm, along this line, is when the direction is along our preferred z axis, rotation x1, y plane, and for rotating diatomics or physical rotation, we did found that there is a quantum state with no rotation at all, analog of uh, S orbital, and then there is a minimal quantum of rotation. But if we would look on the electron, I'm going to postulate something instead of uh, deriving. The state with no rotation is absent for this object. So, but there are only two states of internal rotation. One is clockwise, another is counterclockwise. You cannot spin it quicker or slower because the total amount of energy associated with this internal rotation is fixed. So from previous statement about changing the length of vector and orientation for spin, you can, for internal rotation of electron, you can only change the direction of it, but not the uh, its pace. What does it mean? I am going to become happy. I don't know if you will share my happiness, but um, from complicated enough subjects, we are coming back to the area where rigorous and relatively simple math can be applied again and, and followed in all details. Although we will not do it in the class here because of lack of time, but it is possible. So if there are only two permitted directions, it means for this quantum object there are only two states. And it's not good to tell about this clockwise and uh, counterclockwise rotations in public, it's better to say just internal degree of freedom is two quantum, is two states. So it's uh, I probably need to cut this part from from the recordings, but there are only two quantum states. You can call them up and name it with direct rotation and down, or people name it creatively like alpha, 
<coughs> or they call them plus one half or minus one half. But it is just two states, two states for the state. So it means that to some sense we already know the eigenstates, but we don't know eigenstates of what? Probably of the operator of total angular momentum of the of the uh, z projection of angular momentum and maybe of Hamiltonian. But whatever we do, whatever relations between these two states are, the basis for describing of, of the spin has only the two two states. So any um, any quantum state in this basis is represented as vector with two components for a vast majority of our time we wasted in the class or maybe not wasted maybe uh, enjoyed or got something helpful we were considering the infinite numbers of degrees of freedom when you were doing your projects you took the x axis you discretized it onto 100 or 200 steps and in order to describe, to determine uh, the wave function at a given time, you, you were providing probability amplitude, the psi function at each point of space, right? And if you would, if you want to be absolutely precise, we need infinite number of, of such points for a continuous uh, degree of freedom. For speed. Have continuous x, you have infinite number of discrete points. But for spin, our space consists only of two states, two basis states, not infinite, but only two, which can be named along this ways, like alpha and beta, plus or minus, plus one half, minus one half. Right? So any wave function that relates to the spin will be recorded as sorry, equals expansion coefficient in front of first basis state alpha plus expansion coefficient in front of the second basis state beta so right now uh, we even not touching whether those are eigenstates but each state will be a superposition of this rotating clockwise and rotating counter this is so nice if we foresee necessity of doing something by pattern paper. So it is the simplest possible class of uh, problems in the whole modern science. So last time uh, I seriously <coughs> faced vectors of dimension two was last uh, year of middle school with vector addition right, x and y or maybe the first year of, of high school now we are coming back to this level of complexity so quantum state just two projections two numbers and then uh, one applies all machinery and all paradigms of quantum operators so many if you ever need to teach quantum. Many textbooks start with the spin because mathematically it is the simplest problem. Uh, I do not welcome this idea because it is a little abstract and it may kill enthusiasm. Well, you can kill enthesiasm anyway, <laughs> even with other systems, but um, I think it is too abstract to start this. So, but technically, we could wipe off anything we did before and start quantum and physical chemistry from today. So it is another entry in the building and we, we, you can climb up to the, to the same level of development. Glory. So what do you do if you are exposed to quantum system and you know that 
you need to establish a connection with real world, you need to find some of its properties, you need to tell something about it. What do we do? Find the Yeah. Yes. Yes. It's a universal answer. Um, how do you find, oh, let's discuss how can you find the hematoma to speak? It, do, do not be surprised. It is a, it's a big challenge. I do not know. Um, I wouldn't say that I do not know the answer, but I do not see a straight path. To it. It's uh, counterintuitive and uh, not logical. <coughs> one can, one could start. Let's go back from total value of angular momentum and try to do some tricks to express amount of rotation, and then express rotation along x, y, and z axis, add them together and consider it as, uh, as Hamiltonian, which would be right. But there is a, another way that brings us through our favorite philosophy of bypass, which may look not very logical at the first, but then it uh, shortens the way to, to the answer. So, which, what are your favorite operators regarding the harmonic oscillator? The ladder operators. Yes. Uh, what, what do you think I will tell next? There's ladder operators for spin. Yes. So, and um, if you do have two states, and I'm not putting this uh, as an energy uh, axis, just two states. So we can introduce the operators that you pump it from one state to, to another and back. Right? Let's just chew this idea and see the consequences. I promise it is the shortest way. And again, do not take it too much seriously. There is no time for rigorous. And my goal is to entertain it. Right now, there is no time to direct things. And there will be no homework on this. Pure entertainment. Vector. So quantum state. Is alpha C beta. So if the system resides in state alpha, alpha, how would we record such system in the basis of this uh, two component vector? What will be the value of projection C alpha and C beta? C alpha equals C beta equals one zero. <coughs> Everyone agrees, right? It's nature. One zero. What if the system is in beta? Then wave vector will be zero one, right? So we didn't move anywhere towards real world, but we already have mathematical tools to do the spin. Right? So we have quantum states, basis vectors in discrete form. Not abstract, but discrete, discrete form of matrix. Now, um, if you do have raising and lowering operators that raising is plus acting on alpha will make it beta and lowering 
plus minus acting in beta will mean alpha. Right now it is abstraction. But if you want to go from abstract space to something that we can touch, maybe not in real life, but in uh, virtual space, if the quantum state is a vector, then operator should be <coughs> anonymous, right? So the question is, which matrix matrix we represent as plus and as minus? So we will want to construct such matrix that you convert this vector into this vector and other ones. Any idea is how such matrix may look. If, if you know, stay happy. If you don't know, just try to concentrate for your, for your pleasure. So the elements are either 0 or 1 here and there, right? So elements of metrics that will convert between these vectors will also need to be either zeros or ones. The shape of the metrics can be guessed, can be generated from practicing row by column matrix multiplication. And we are switching between different rows. So we need to find such matrix that multiplying by this, uh, this column will generate a state with one on the top and zero in the bottom. I don't know how to split it onto subtasks, but we, and when I was in the third year undergrads, I also was very upset on the instructor because it was presented as the like, here is a problem, here is the answer, but how do you get through it? Probably one needs to write a matrix two by two with unknown coefficients and plug it into, into these definitions and then solve for them. But if you do know the answer, you do not have patience to wait. So let's just check. Row by column. Row by column will give zero, right? Row by column will, will give one. And inversely. Row by column gives one. Row by column gives zero. So it is a matrix four by four. With one element equals to one and three elements equal to zero. Make sense? No need to memorize, no need to practice, there will be no assessment of your memories and skills on this. It's just for your pleasure. Group by column. So if we do have two matrices, S plus and S minus, weather operators, they will convert whatever was in one state into another and that. Okay. Let's go further on to non-logical counterintuitive way of bypasses. And follow the same counterintuitive logic as we did for harmonic oscillator. What can you do? What can you practice if you did define an operator? So there are two approaches to quantum theory. One is do anything for beloved wave function. And that, but anything we do as a target to predict observables. And another one is to forget about function and do everything for expectation value or for the operator. Okay. So there is a Heisenberg equation of motion and there is a um, there is a natural wish 
to solve Heisenberg of motion, Heisenberg equation of motion for any operator. So if if we do it, it will make the achievement of remaining goals much quicker and more logical. For lucky you who are in this class, it is not as new, not as challenging, because we went through this path for harmonic oscillator. We knew that one can solve Heisenberg equation function for raising ball operators, and then upon solving for them, one can set up linear combinations of these solutions and then come to something truly absurd that has relation to real life. Let me offer you this path again and claim that it will be much quicker than any any other pedagogical pathways. Let's see. What is the energy of spin up in absence of magnetics? How does it differ from energy of spin down in absence of magnetics? If this question challenges you too much, let's walk around for educated certified physicists. You took my invitation to, to sleep and relax two weeks ago. So don't open the ask questions. They should, they should have made their homework in their classes. Degenerate? Oh, uh, you know, degenerate. <laughs> yes, correct. Well, uh, can, can you s um, say in different words? They should have the same energy because there's no acting forces. Right? There's nothing going. So if you do not have anything acting on the rotating internal degree of freedom of polarity, whether it rotates, rotates clockwise or counterclockwise, where its in degree of freedom has plus one half or minus one half projection, the energy will be the same. How does this information prompt us to set up a hemotonium? <coughs> It means that Hamiltonian is typically di diagonal, right? Have a better idea and use more logic. By analogy to our two uh, dimensional rotator, what is the weak energy of the rotor does commute this? total angular momentum squared. So the length of the vector of angular momentum. And we do know that the length of total angular momentum for spin by our axiomatics, by our definitions, doesn't change. So we can set up the, this uh, total angular momentum squared as, I'm skipping the factors. 0, 0, 1. So an identity operator that doesn't change anything. So whatever our spin state is, it will be not affected by the uh, by either Hamiltonian or total angular momentum operator. This is sufficient input to practice Heisenberg equation of motion. I 
I want to speak quicker because of time. So here is the why war is Heisenberg equation of motion. But before we, I do not withdraw. Just at a little slower pace. Summary of what we have told. One state represented by this one. Another state represented by this one. The raising algorithm can be expressed either as a matrix or in Dirac form as, a, as we always uh, had caps times bra. So it removes beta, creates alpha. And our opposite S minus removes uh, this alpha bra and generates beta cap. And the thing that I, I did skip the component of the total number of momentum or total algorithms to get one on the diagonal, one can keep the same head and bra. One can, one can multiply the uh, S plus plus minus and S minus plus plus. I want to go to uh, Heisenberg equation of motion very quickly. <coughs> but this basis, this basis of the operators gives <coughs> a way to for to formulate Hamiltonian of those these two other systems. So this uh, writing energy of one and energy two is energy of first state multiplied by this projector, energy of second state multiplied by this projector, or it can be expressed by energy of this two products of raising over operators or this energy multiplied by projectors. Right now we do not need it. Those of you who did Marcus theory may like it as a way to express the Hamiltonian for states with several potential energy surfaces. Because on one hand we have right now the spin, but in the future electronic degrees of freedom, which we described with this Dirac notation prime cap. But at the same time, these energies of one state and another state do depend on position and act as quantum operators acting on position themselves. So we, we can have same kinetic energy for both and then different potentials for ground and excited states multiplied by this uh, projectors. So I'll try to cover it again on the way. Now I am looking for Heisenberg equation of motion. Yes. Fine. So the commute Hamiltonian is operator that we want to propagate in time. And we can do this thing even if we are if you didn't develop far enough in understanding what this operator is. It's universal. For any operator, you can formulate Heisenberg equation of motion and so on. So, if we formulate it for S plus, we can enjoy a lot of easy and pleasant algebra. And find <coughs> that it will perform the same thing as we observe for raising operator in the harmonic oscillator. It will be value for the operator. That accum just accumulates phase, which means rotates in complex plane. If the energies are not degenerate, if they degenerate, then it just doesn't change. Please do not develop theme of upset to me. Remember, right now. I'm squeezing material of two weeks into uh, uh, 50 minutes. So if something seems not logical or some derivations are skipped, do not suffer. Uh, so if we practice the same operation for lower material, we
practice these same uh, Heisenberg equation of motion for lowering of the rhythm, if you also accumulate the phase with the phase proportional to difference between this alpha and beta states, if they degenerate, there, nothing, there will be trivial dynamics, means no dynamics. But the sign of this phase accumulation will be different. So it's like rotating complex plane in opposite directions. Two oscillator exponentials, our favorite mathematical object. Now, the door is opening and pulled by the other emperor. And tells like, hey guys, I know you do not like complex numbers. Why don't we convert it to real? So any imaginary exponential is sum of cosine and i times sine, right? <laughs> and if we take this dynamics of raising and lowering operators and build linear combinations, adding or subtracting them, then instead of strange oscillator exponential, we will get just sine and cosine. Sine and cosine with a phase proportional to offset energy, which will be zero if there is no magnetic field and will increase if magnetic field is applied. This is another statement I created my instructor. So I, I know it's either too quick or not logical, but adding together these two things or subtracting them will bring us from complex plane rotation into sine and cosine. So, now we are coming to a real world. What I have? So, no, two minutes. Very good. So, if you take expectation values of this S plus and S minus uh, operators, add together, initial values, and then oscillation proportional to cosine. If I take the subtraction divided by imaginary unit, if you evolve in time as sine. <coughs> so S theta, summation and subtraction of this uh, weather operators will correspond to projection of magnetization of the material composed of such objects. So if you have unpaired electrons sitting on an atom or molecule and the values of such, such things, then adding and subtraction of the weather operators will tell us what is the internal magnetic field of such system in X and Y dimension. So if we have a little offset between their energies, then this sine and uh, cosine rotation there is a magnet board magneton which is a proportionality between this uh, spin components and actual magnetic field you can measure just put this magnetic material on scale and see how it acts um, um, another magnet and then Magnetic field has three projections. Right? X, Y, and Z. Z projection will not change, and there is a, another combination of, of this basic operators that gives Z projection. But these two that we were talking about, change in time as sine and cosine with the same frequency. So sine and cosine is a constant length of the same frequency is an equation of circle. Which means if you do have a system with one unpaired electron, you apply a little magnetic field, you make a lot of them, and then you measure magnetization. This magnetization will perform precession, proportional to the strength of, of magnetic field. And this effect, um, in our simplest case, Z projection doesn't change, and x and y projections circle. In more complicated cases, the 
the tip of spin three component vector, it forms more complicated trajectory on a sphere. This sphere has a name of Felix block. And motion of a tip of uh, spin vector on a block sphere is a key to understanding nuclear magnetic resonance. Enough. Thank you for being passionate about this extremely squeezed materials. Moving forward to see you on Wednesday. Relax, accumulate strength. <laughs> I think other courses uh, give you harder time. <laughs>